Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Frame Live. As more centers are opening up every day, and we're starting to hear and see that more customers are coming in, they're coming in more often, they're happy, they were so ready to get back into the swing of things, and we're starting to see centers revenue start to climb. So today, we have as our guest, Mr. Chris Keller. Chris is the owner of the All Star in Riverhead, New York, and he has been open now for, I believe it's about a month. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Dottie. Glad to be here. Well, you were on our show back in June, uh, gosh, and at that time, you were really starting to go through and uh, get your center ready for reopening. Uh, you were doing cleaning and sanitizing. You were putting in all sorts of processes to make sure that your customers were as safe as they could possibly be. So that was in June. So tell us a little bit about what happened from mid-June to the time you opened, which was when did you actually open? We were allowed to open on August the 17th. So today is actually officially one month that we've been open um, from June until that point. Um, we did quite a, uh, quite a lot of things. I was very involved with working with other proprietors, which is a great thing that actually came from uh, this process of trying to get us to be allowed to reopen. Um, all the New York uh, state proprietors uh, band together and really work together. And a lot of, I, I started a lot new, a lot of new friendships of people that I didn't know um, before, and now I do very well. And I followed them on Facebook and we, um, we've we been talking since reopening. So oh, very it, was, nice. it, was a, it was a real good thing. And that's something that um, I'd love to be able to take forward. Um, even my local uh, competi competing centers, um, uh, you know, we got more of a bond and I wanted to do something with them, uh, you know, ongoing um, because it was definitely a, a group effort that we all got to reopen. And, um, you know, we, we did so many things as a group and, uh, you know, definitely the power was in us working together as a state um, industry in the state to, uh, to make it happen and it, it worked. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it was nice that, that we did start to see bonds be formed. Um, and, you know, We've said it from the beginning, we are all in this together. And it's, you know, it, when we can come together and, and be unified with our message, um, you know, it's just so much better. And it's nice to hear that you've created that bond that, you know, from this point forward is going to have some very positive results for you and, and, and others as well. Um, so tell us a little bit about how reopening looked. You, I know you did a lot between, um, you know, closing and reopening and, and being instrumental in accelerating the reopening. So now that you've been open now for a month now, almost, um, how have you been doing? Um, it's been quite well. I mean, it's, it's definitely a slow ramp back, um, but a good one. Um, okay. The the customers came back um, with open arms. I mean, basically um, from obviously from when we were closed down, um, I spent, I think the first, I guess, probably the first three months of it um, strictly focused on everything I could do to make my employees comfortable when they returned and safe. And mm -hmm. then my customers, of course, um, to feel comfortable so that when we were able to reopen that I could be assured that they knew that I took the pandemic seriously and that uh, I took their return seriously. So we did so many things from temperature stations to um, sanitizing stations to UV lighting, uh, sanitizing um, cabinets for sanitizing house balls and rental shoes. Um, I bought a uh, electrostatic fogger to do um, a third process in the cleaning at night um, and also to make it easier on my my uh, employees to be able to um, do everything they needed to do um, for the customer. So um, it was a great thing. And then the last, literally after I 
kind of felt like I, I exhausted everything I could think of as far as making it safe. I then led into uh, my efforts to work with the other proprietors to try to reopen. And we did um, many, many great things uh, out, you know, uh, out of the box thinking. Sure. Uh, we even hired a plane to fly with a message to the governor because we heard the governor enjoyed going on his boat on the weekends. So we felt like we were being ignored. So one of, uh, one of the proprietors in my area, uh, John Laspina came up with a great idea. We, we uh, commissioned a, a plane to fly over the beaches of South, the South shore of Long Island um, and expose our plight to every beach goer. And uh, luckily it was a beautiful day and uh, hundreds of thousands of people saw our, our dilemma and uh, basically the message was, Governor Cuomo, please let bowling reopen. So we did everything from that um, all the way to, um, we did a, a social media campaign uh, with all the bowling proprietors. We all mm -hmm. kind of did a little piece of the video and we sent that out to everybody in each of our areas. Um, um, we even had proprietors that sent uh, bowling pins uh, to the governor's office, had their, uh, their customers come to their center, get a bowling pin, um, uh, sign it and give them a mess, the governor a message and mailed it to the governor. So um, the governor got many bowling pins. I don't know what he did with them, but um, <laughs> I think all the things we did um, uh, combined worked. We, we, we had petitions signed. We did lobbying in, 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 uh, in Albany. Um, we had a, a, a firm work for us um, in Albany to try to get the attention, um, you know, of the bowling, uh, the bowling proprietors uh, up in Albany. And we, we worked closely with the New York State Bowling Proprietors Association and the BPAA and, and Cubic AMF and anybody that um, could give us a voice, we, we sure. did. So it, it really panned out because uh, literally the governor's office came to my center um, three days before, you know, they gave me a call and they asked if they would be if I'd be willing to give them a tour of my place and what I've done. And that happened three days before we were allowed to open. So I sure hope that in some way that certainly helped um, us, us get open. Oh, for sure. Because it, was a, it was a wonderful day for all of us in New York State. Uh, that August 17th announcement, actually, I guess the announcement was made on August the 14th and we were allowed to open three days later, so. Wonderful. Well, you know, uh, certainly, and you touched on this, that you, you know, y'all combined your minds and, and y'all really were thinking outside the box to come up with ways in which you could, you know, get the message out. And, and I will say uh, the plane was definitely creative, uh, and, but it made an impression. It captured attention uh, and it stood out because it was a unique way to get a message to someone. And so, you know, it's those things that I hope continue that drive and that passion that we saw, uh, you know, it, there was nothing that was going to stop you from doing everything within your power to get your center opened up so that your families and your customers could continue enjoying their time at your center. And that is admirable. Um, and I know we have still a number of centers that have not been allowed to open or some that have even opened and had to, you know, were only open less than a day and they had to turn back around and close down. Um, and so uh, what do you have to say for those guys that are still not open, Chris? Wow. Um, I feel for them uh, wholeheartedly. Obviously, you know, we, we felt that. And, um, you know, I would just say, you know, stick, you know, Fight the fight. Uh, don't give up. It's worth why. It's worth it to everything you, we had did. It paid out. Paid off. And I think that's the one message I would give to them that haven't been able to open. That we're behind you. Um, obviously, any way I could help. If if anything, I'd gladly take your call. Um, but um, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and um, the customers are counting on us. Our bowling family is counting on us to stick to it and uh, continue to work hard. Um, I know, you know, there was times, I remember one day specifically that, boy, I was, I was about as low as it can be. I was like, wow, I've tried everything. And, uh, and, and I felt, and still felt that no one's, no one's listening, you know, and, and, and nothing's happening. And 
you know, I remember that day was literally five days before we got the notice that we were going to open. So actually it was the day before the governor's office called me and said, could we come look at your center? So it shows you that even when you're at the lowest point, there's hope and, uh, and, and it, it worked for New York state and it absolutely will work for your states too. Um, it's only time um, between you and opening. So uh, hang in there. Absolutely. So I'm going to glance away just a second. We've got some shout outs we want to do. We have Jordan that's with us. Hi, Jordan. Thanks for tuning in. He says, hey, Chris. Uh, we also have Jonathan and Joe Rusin. Uh, welcome to our show, guys. So, so Chris, I think that that um, is a great message to give out. I, I have heard from a number of proprietors, in the beginning, it was slow. We, uh, in most of the centers, the competitive or the loyalists were the ones back, the ones that are in, that were in the center all the time for league bowling or were in three days a week to practice. Those were the ones that came back first. They were ready. They just wanted to get back in and bowl. They already had that relationship. They knew what you guys were doing. They were ready to bowl. Um, and, and, but what we're starting to see is now our, our, other customers are following and we're starting to see them come through the doors. And as a result, we're starting to see revenue continue to just slowly build back up. Is that what you have been seeing in your center? Well, strangely enough, my uh, center, it was the opposite. The okay. initial initial um, surge that we had, which which is continuing, is, is families. We actually had a great deal of families come in and still are. And, you know, which was followed by the uh, loyalists, the league bowlers. So, mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're right, it was, it's a slow ramp, but we've been very steady um, continuing from, you know, from when we reopened and um, our leagues came back pretty well. Um, some I'm hearing a little bit less than us, but we were lucky. Um, basically the, um, we had a couple of leagues that were a slightly less teams return but then we had new bowlers and new teams that came. So uh, my bowler count is actually flat. It's actually the same as it was last year, which is a really good sign, a good yes. positive for what we've done and that, that the customers were comfortable. So um, it actually has been pretty good. Uh, open play um, is about 40% right now of what it was, um, okay. but it's steady. And you know, like, I think that's the part that takes time. Um, yeah. But, but the food and beverage part, with the bowling, uh, with the open play has been good. So the customers that are coming are, are enjoying themselves and they're, they're spending money and they're having a good time. So um, I think it's all a positive. I, I really am happy with the numbers right there where they are right now. Um, obviously we need it to grow. And I really have, am, have, uh, I'm optimistic that it will grow quickly. I, I really well, and, and one thing that, you know, is, is interesting, the families you said were, were some of the first ones to return, which is a great, uh, you know, uh, that's great because those are the ones that typically are much um, more particular about the environment. So that tells me that you have done a really good job communicating to those families that um, that it's safe, it's clean, and this is what I have done for you. Um, because if, if you had not done the phenomenal job that you did, I think they may have been a little bit hesitant to come back in. You know, our, our kids are our everything. And, and I think that it's uh, a good message that they've sent you by coming in uh, upon opening. So, and, and I wanna mention, we talked a little bit um, before we went live about your video and I had shared what a great job that you did to bring the customer along in your journey of what you were doing um, for them while you were closed. Uh, and and the, the video itself was, I, I, I could feel your passion when I watched this video. And you shared with me that you actually, the, the video you, uh, commissioned your son to help you with that project. So I thought that was really uh, cool that, you know, you were able to to keep it kind of all in the family. It was certainly uh, well-produced 
Um, but tell us a little bit about how that came to be and how you thought of that idea. Yeah, th thank you for the kind words you're saying. But um, yeah, my, my son does vis video editing. He went to college for it and he, um, he works for a company to, to do that. And uh -huh. um, so it was easy for me, you know, he has, he's a bowler also. So, um, and, and uh, you know, obviously we're, we're very close and he, uh, you know, as soon as I mentioned, I just said, uh, Lee, I'd like to show, um, you know, the customers and, and uh, you know, uh, and, and my employees, everything I've done for them to make it safe. You know, I think it's sure. a, very important to communicate that uh, as, as, mu as easily as I can. And it's hard to just um, mention it by text. So I said, yes. I'd love to do a video. Could you help me with that? And he, of course, he, he you know, jumped all He's over. He's all he over that. Yes. Oh, yeah, he loved, he wanted <laughs> to help dad. And uh, then he put it together. He, he did everything. He wrote the, the script for it. Uh, it's funny, he, he did cue cards and he made, he even made using uh, talent like me, uh, made me look good. So he did a great job. Um, he's very professional at it and it conveyed it. I mean, we put it out on Facebook and social, you know, all social media. And I think between Facebook and Instagram, I think it got like about 25,000 hits. So that's um, wonderful. And, and I still have, which is, a, you know, we didn't mention this before, but I have customers in my bowling center that walk up to that. I've never met them, never met them before in my life. And they say, hello, you're the owner, aren't you? I saw your, your video exactly. on, on Facebook or on, on Instagram or whatever. Um, you, thank you. You've done so many great things here and we'll be back. So right there, that showed me that, you know, that, that was well worth it. Yeah. But it was it was very personal, Chris, and that it was very authentic. I mean, I as I said, I could feel your passion when I was watching the video. And that's what our customers these days appreciate. They appreciate that that authenticity. I mean, you were speaking from your heart to your customers uh, and they now feel that they have a connection with you. Uh, and that's, you know, really how we start to gain that loyalty. Uh, and, and so it's nice to hear that the customers were very appreciative of that. And, and it definitely benefited um, for you to do that. And, you know, it's not always the easiest thing to be behind a camera. So my hat's off for you for Thank taking you. that um, challenge and doing that. And, you know, I, I want to as, as we're talking and, and we've got other centers that have yet to open and may have been a little hesitant to do something like that. It doesn't have to be professionally done if you don't have the, the, the means to do that. To simply get in front of a camera and share your story of what you're doing um, with your customers is extremely valuable. So uh, yeah, you're don't absolutely be right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I'm lucky, you know, to have my son that was able to do it for me that way. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, even when we worked with the with the, you know, the, the bone proprietors, uh, mm -hmm. New York State bone proprietors, you know, we did, some people took the, the videos from their phones, they did, yes. and we pieced it all together, but it was powerful because we're all speaking from, uh, you know, from being passionate and, right. and we believe in what we've done and we believe we were ready. So when we put that video together to try to tell the, uh, the governor that we were ready, um, it came across beautifully. So I would, I would encourage that. There's nothing better, I think, that came of this, you know, process for me than than realizing that you really need to communicate with the customer. I mean, we're communi we communicated through our, you know, BLS database. Um, we send direct emails to the league bowlers and everyone we have on our database, um, direct emails. But also with everything we've done on social media, they're watching. They mm -hmm. they're very aware of what what you you know you've done, and the more you can educate them. And let them know what you've done, um, the better, because uh, you know, they're interested about it. Sure, absolutely. And you know, Chris, we've talked a little bit about competitive bowling. We talked a little bit about open play and families. I'm curious um, because we are getting into that time of year where people are getting into the holiday mode, and you know, we've got Halloween coming up, and Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Um, how have parties been? Are you starting to see parties come back? Just, I mean the the third week um the first right. three weeks we really didn't have many calls we didn't i guess they were they were seeing um how things would go i guess Best in the water um, mm -hmm. but just really last week we started getting 
uh, not only inquiries but bookings and um, and, and and you know and and, and people that were um, talking about bigger parties too, uh, okay. which is nice that we're not only able to book yet um, because the restrictions are 50 sure. people in in New York State, but you know we had one person that inquired about having a 120 people, and they just said that please give them a call as soon as we're allowed to book it. So um, once again, it, it's the light is there. I mean, the light at the end of the tunnel is there, uh, you know, because they're not worried about it, which is a good thing. And uh, that's what we all need. We need to, to slowly um, prepare for, um, for coming out of this. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I think with Beyond the Frame, we've shared the experience with so many different proprietors and it's just really nice to start to hear now that, you know, we, we were in, we were at the bottom of our, <laughs> we were at the bottom of the barrel and, and we felt, you know, the pain of, of what was going on in our industry. And it's so nice to see that we're slowly coming out and we're starting to hear these stories of hope. Uh, and so I think it's, you know, the, the timeline is there. It's what we're seeing across the board that, you know, you start and it just continues. Uh, but don't give up on the momentum that you've got going. Continue that. That's the one thing that I hope that the centers do is continue that that uh, message that you're safe and you're clean and, and you're there to entertain them. Uh, and, and I would love to see that message continue really from this point forward because it has really changed the mindset of so many people about what bowling is and what bowling centers are. And they're now seeing it's a good, clean, safe, fun environment. That's an entertainment experience. And so I really hope that that is, you know, something that we continue to do long after this pandemic is gone. I totally agree. I mean, I hope I hope I see the same thing because um, all of us with that same attitude, I think, will, uh, you know, things will go far. Absolutely. Well, Chris, uh, as we get ready to wrap here for today, uh, I know that you've got a lot of friends watching today, uh, some of which have even um, messaged us and said hi. Uh, is there anything, if you have any of your your employees or any of your customers that are watching our show today, do you have any message that you would like to, to shout out for them? Well, to my employees and my customers, I, I'm, you know, I, I hope they realize uh, how much they mean to me and uh, everything uh, that I did um, uh, during the pandemic and, and going forward is all based on them. I mean, if I put in uh, a new product in my center or um, I, I, you know, something to make them safer here or whatever it may be, it's all with them in mind. I mean, they, they drive everything. Um, there's nothing I care about more than that. Um, I love the bowling business. Uh, I think we all, we all in it uh, do it. Uh, bowling gets you. Um, it does. Can get it out and it doesn't it. It let you go. <laughs> no, it doesn't let you go. It's all I've been in my whole life. And, yeah. um, you know, I love what I do. I love my bowling center and uh, I love my customers and my employees. So um, well, I guess the one thing awesome. I'd say is just stick, stick in there. I appreciate their business now. And I appreciate if they could come back uh, once again, strong and, and uh, once again, reaching out to the, the, um, the proprietors that aren't open yet, stay tough. And I'm with you, man. And I, uh, I hope uh, all the girls and guys and girls out there, you know, stick to it. It'll happen. Absolutely, it will happen. It absolutely will. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I certainly do appreciate you being on our show today. Uh, and I know that the message that you sent out is going to be appreciated by so many people, especially those that have yet to open up. Um, just a reminder on Beyond the Frame, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, next week, we are going to be joined by Adam Melrose uh, from Bowling Music Network, and he's going to uh, talk to us about how uh, music can actually enhance the experience and how it can help make that experience the very best that it can possibly be, as well as a lot of other uh, subjects, I'm sure. Um, and then we also have an upcoming webinar uh, on September the 23rd at 3 o'clock. Uh, seven ways to draw families back to bowling. So definitely one, uh, if you are one of those centers that 
uh, families are just now starting to come back, make sure that you mark that on your calendar and tune in. And hopefully you'll be able to take a few things away that can help you drive those families to your uh, center even sooner. Uh, also, just a reminder, we have a 15-minute fix segment that we are going to start introducing on Beyond the Frame. If you have a problem or a challenge that you would like for us to help you with, we will actually do it live. Uh, we're going to take the different challenges and, uh, and pick uh, some to actually do live on one of our Beyond the Frame segments. So if you have something you want us to help you with, uh, just send it to successcoach at cubicaamf.com and I'll put that in the comments of today's show. And we'll be happy to have you on air. And if you're not uh, in the mood to be behind a camera, we'll even solve your problem live uh, and not require you to be on the show. So anyway, so make plans to do that if there's anything that we can help you with. And um, until then, we hope that you stay safe, stay well, and think beyond the frame. Thanks again, Chris. Thank you, Dottie.